Duncan Brown is a Charles Brightman professor of physics at Syracuse University and was part of the team that made this historic discovery. Duncan, how exciting was that? It was pretty exciting. <laughs> this has been a very exciting moment for all of us involved. Well, last month, researchers at LIGO Observatory detected gravitational waves from the collision of two neutron stars. On Monday, they announced they were able to locate that collision. What is the significance of that observation? So what this observation means is that we now know where the gold and platinum in the universe comes from. Mm. I'm wearing a wedding ring right now that's made <laughs> of platinum, and we've seen the universe create that platinum in the collision of these two neutron stars. It's really mind-boggling to imagine this, and right now we're showing viewers the NASA animation here. LIGO also detected gravitational waves from the collision of two black holes in August. Explain for us here, what is the difference? So black holes, as their name implies, are black. When they collide together, they make a giant ripple of gravitational waves, but they don't emit any light. Mm -hmm. Neutron stars are two city-sized atomic nuclei. Um, they're the remnant of dead stars, and when they collide together wait, wait, at one third the speed of light... Wait, two city-sized atomic nuclei. Let me get my brain around that for a second. Okay, continue. Sorry, Duncan. Okay, so, so you have, you take a star, it burns away its nuclear yeah. fuel, it collapses down, yeah. and it produces this ash called a neutron star, right. which is one and a half times the mass of the sun, packed into a ball about the size of Manhattan. <laughs> you smash two of these things together at one third the speed of light, and you get gravitational waves given off, and you get light given off. All <laughs> types of light, from gamma rays down to radio waves with visible light. So we've actually taken pictures of this collision. We've not mm -hmm. just heard the gravitational waves, felt their vibrations, we've seen the light Light from this collision with telescopes. So it was so fascinating. We saw a little bit of this in the piece that we played just before you, but those gravitational detections were combined with data from um, electromagnetic telescopes, even NASA's Fermi satellite. Can you explain a little bit more about how that happened and sort of the ripple effect as it sort of spread the word of this and then scientists all over the world basically all essentially coordinating and training their instruments in this one place in this massive universe of ours? That's right. So LIGO and Virgo, the gravitational wave detectors, they feel the ripples in space-time, and they can tell you where on the sky this source is coming from. The sky's a really big place, and telescopes can't see much of the sky, so they need to be told exactly where to look. And so using the gravitational waves, LIGO and Virgo, our French-Italian partners, um, and the LIGO observatories in the U.S., we told the astronomy community, hey, look here. We think there are two neutron stars colliding right here in the sky, the astronomy community leapt on it, pointed telescopes, scanned that patch of the sky, and they saw the afterglow, they saw the light given off by this collision. Incredible. Well, both the gravitational waves and the gamma rays from the collision traveled outward at the speed of light, more proof of Einstein's theory of general relativity. So where does this leave physics and astronomy? What comes next here? So this is really just the beginning. I mean. Um, 400 years ago, Galileo pointed his telescope at the heavens and made the first observations with telescopes using light. We're only just making the very first observations of the universe with gravitational waves. With gravitational waves, we can see into the cores of exploding stars. We can see these black hole collisions, these neutron star collisions. And as our detectors get better, we might be able to see further back in time to the beginning of the universe and be able to take pictures of the beginning of the universe. And uh, just one more question, Duncan, before we let you go. Uh, the idea that we as a human race have been able to come up with these instruments to detect this moment that happened 130 million years ago. It seems to be astronomical, no pun intended, the chances that our technology would be able to capture that moment. The technology involved here is incredible. This has been a huge team of people, over 3,000 people involved. People have been working on this for, for decades. Gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein a century ago. Mm -hmm. This is really the beginning of a whole new field of astronomy. All right. Can't wait to see what comes next. Duncan Brown, thank you so much. Thank you.